everyone. Welcome back inside the film room. I'm your host, Zach Goins. And today I'm once again joined by Nick Muhammad, Nate the Great from Ted Lasso. Nick, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Zach. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to have you back. I know, uh, obviously, uh, a lot has gone down since the last time that we spoke with uh, season two just wrapping up on Friday of Ted Lasso. But before we get into any sort of season two talk, which there's a lot to, to discuss, I want to talk Emmys because obviously we just came off a huge, you guys just came off a huge uh, couple of weeks with 20 nominations, seven wins, you yourself nominated for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Comedy. Talk to me about that experience. How great was that to have the first season to take off? Yeah, I mean, you know, just what wonderful. I mean, you know, completely surprising. I think, you know, obviously the, you know, we knew the show was was doing well, which everyone was delighted about, but, you know, you can never anticipate these things. And, you know, the awards is sometimes, you know, can be, the awards thing can be a bit noisy and distracting sometimes, but, you know, it was just a, we were just so delighted that, you know, the show has been taken to people's hearts and, um, you know, so delighted for, you know, Jason, Hannah and Brett and, you know, just, just everyone. And, and to, you know, just to have that, that recognition was, yeah, I mean, completely surreal and overwhelming, really. And uh, I, I went, I only went, I went to the Emmys, like, I was there for 48 hours, the whole experience. So I flew from the UK on the Saturday night with the Emmys uh -huh. on the Sunday and flew back on the Monday. <laughs> and so I was just sort of jet lagged throughout the A whole A quick day. whirlwind, yeah. I've got to imagine um, that being nominated with one of four co-stars within the same category, how, yeah. how crazy was that? Was there a little competition amongst you all being like, <laughs> Because it wasn't like, you know, up against somebody random, but your own people. Oh, no. I mean, to be honest, I thought, I mean, we all undoubtedly thought that it was going to go to Brett. And, uh, and there was part of me was like maybe Brendan because, you know, co-created the show and stuff. So, you know, me and Jeremy were just like, we're just lucky to be here. We're just we here were like, for the we're, yeah. yeah, we're here for the free booze and the food. <laughs> we, were, we, we, we weren't getting up on that podium. So we were like, we just got to have a really lovely time without any of that stress. And, you know, we didn't prepare speeches. We were like, no, no, Brett, Brett's got this. It's all right. It's all right. He's going to do us good. So, yeah, we were, we were delighted for him. That's awesome. I'm sure that was a blast. Well, I know your visit to the Emmys was the first time that you've come to the U.S. in, in your yeah. life, which is a pretty, yeah. you know, most people, I would imagine it's just like a, a tourist trip or something, but you were here on big business. What was that experience like? Well, like I say, it's such a, a whirlwind visit. I mean, I love yeah, 48 I loved it. hours. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was, you know, I didn't I didn't get to see obviously much of, of, of L.A. And um, but yeah, it was incredible. It was Jason's birthday as well that weekend. So that was mm. nice. And it was you know what? It was the first time that we'd all been able to actually hang out together when we weren't filming. So it was actually one of the real first times that we probably got to socialize as a group and especially, you know, because COVID has been, you know, very restricting. And so it was just right. genuinely nice to, to see everyone again, you know, after a while. And so yeah, they're such a great group of people. So, yeah. Well, pleasantries aside, we've got to get down to the nitty gritty now. We're, we've got to talk season two and Nate's behavior. <laughs> yeah. Because I will okay. say it's delightful to talk to Nick Muhammad again, because it gets kind of hard when I'm watching the show to separate you being so so wonderful and pleasant from uh, what we've seen from Nate recently. What's, what's going on with him? Well, yeah, dear old Nate. He... <laughs> Well, it's certainly a different story to season one. Uh, you know, it's there's lots of things going on with him. I think, you know, I think it's fair to say a lot of a lot of his behaviour, not to condone any of it, but a lot of it stems from you know the toxic relationship he has with his dad. You know, he's lacking a real guiding light, a father figure, a support network, even. And a lot of those things were in place in season one, not the relationship with his dad. But you know, Ted became that that force for good in his life, and you know, he relied on him. He was a great leader. He supported him and encouraged him, and you know he empowered him. And you know he got promoted, uh, as a, you know, to be a coach by the end of season one. In season two, like he says in that, you know, in that speech to, to Ted at, at the end in in episode twelve, he, he mm -hmm. feels completely and utterly abandoned. You know, he's completely lost. Um, you know, he's clearly going on a bit of a power trip as well. Things have gone to his head. He's lashing out in all the wrong directions. You know, he starts off you know, small, again, not to condone it, but, you know, uh, sort of abusing the kit man who, you know, he used to do his job and, you know, so, and you can sort of maybe sort of see where Nate's coming from. You know, he used to do that job. He's really pernickety. It starts off all right, but then that builds right. and then, you know, he turns to Colin and then, you know, he kind of starts working his way up until, you know, finally he, he you know, lays into Ted and it's just, yeah, it's heart heartbreaking really. But yeah, you know, he's, he's absolutely out of control and, 
you know, he's, he's spiraling really. Was there of his streak of bad behavior, was there something that was most appalling to you? I know like in those last two episodes alone, obviously you've got the Trent Krim leak and then uh, telling yeah. off Ted, cursing him out, going to work for Rupert. But for me personally, it was ripping that believe sign in half because oh, that's yeah. just so, so symbolic of everything that, that has yeah. been built at Richmond. Yeah, when I, when I heard about that, Brendan told me that and um, we were filming outside just at episode 10 or 11 or something. And he just said, oh, because they're just tweaking the script for episode 12. And so, oh yeah, by the way, we're thinking that we might, you know, have Nate rip the beliefs on. I was like, what? I kind of, I was just, you know, I, I follow this show, like, you know, the fans follow the show when we read the scripts and, and then watching the show, because you don't always get to, you know, you're not always, especially with COVID, we weren't always, um, we we're kind of filming in bubbles really. So you don't always get to see everyone else's stuff. And right. so it's a delight to kind of follow every, everyone else's storylines. But yeah, that that moment when Brendan told me that that's what they were thinking, I, I just fell on the floor. <laughs> it's like horrible. <laughs> and, you know, just, the, the, but you know, there, there are so many beats, which, you know, that one where he throws the t-shirt it's kind of you don't see it on camera but he throws the t-shirt at the kit man and and uh, and says i'll make your life a an effing misery and you know all that stuff's horrible and right. you know the inappropriate pass towards keely you know just all that all that stuff was yeah deeply problematic but you know challenging but also fulfilling to film in a way because it's good you know it's telling a completely different story and it felt it felt like you know it was shining a light on behavior that we probably need to shine a light on like bullying and so on right well what I want to know what was your reaction? You mentioned like reading the script, finding this stuff out after being such, you know, a fan favorite in season one and the, the hopeful story. And then to, as you're reading these scripts, wait, this is, this is what's happening to my character. Was that shocking or exciting as an actor to do something completely different? It, it, it is exciting. I mean, I, I, I knew broadly that that's what they were thinking from very early on. I mean, even when, you know, we we're filming the gala episodes in, season one which is episode three or four I can never remember mm -hmm. uh Jay I remember Jason just because we were sat next to each other through a lot of that and um he was just you know talking about his plans for a potential season two or three you know we didn't know it had been picked up right. again at that point and um and yeah he outlined you know roughly this being an Empire Strikes Back type thing for Nate and um uh you know and they've absolutely you know true to their word absolutely stuck with that and you know I didn't know all the details but you know that kind of dark sort of downward spiral that he's gone on absolutely you know that that was that was there from the start and you know it's it seeded early on you know right the, I was going to ask about that you know the first ever time we see Nate he is screaming at Ted like he's shouting right. get off the pitch get off the pitch you know he will do you know this is a character who will do anything for that club he, he's ruthless you know he was scream, and then and it's only when he learns his new coach he's like oh sorry 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 right. so he's and you know he calls Rebecca a shrew he points her and calls her a shrew that's really that's really harsh um, and the, and, you know, the roast he, he, in general, the roast, the roast yeah. because that seems like something that is played for jokes. And it's like a yeah. when you're watching season one, it's a yeah, Nate moment, like you're cheering for him. Yeah. But then to see how yeah. he feeds off, he's being vicious, even though it's funny, yeah. but he's just yeah. feeding off of that, that praise that he yeah. gets for being mean. Yeah. So oh, it's not wrote, something he, completely he out of the blue. Stuff. And he wrote all that stuff. You know, he wanted Ted to deliver that speech, you know, if you remember right. in episode seven, that, but, you know, so he wrote all this stuff uh you know that's Definitely. all up in Nate's head so you know he's yeah absolutely it's all it's all been there it's just um yeah you know he didn't he didn't quite have enough oomph to kind of deliver it in the way he's now kind of you know coming into his own in in season two right well it's funny you mentioned the the first seat the first season first scene where you're running across the field because I remember last time I asked you about that and you said that was one of the final scenes that you filmed in season yeah. one and so it was kind of like the figuring out, wait, at what stage is Nate then? So I'm curious, same question for this season, when you're filming out of order, is it challenging to be like, wait, I'm not this mean yet. I'm still like, oh, I just yeah. filmed something big, but now I have to revert back to episode two, Nate, or something. Uh, a little bit. We, we mostly filmed in order, to be honest. It was, I think episode four and episode nine were, were slightly out of whack, but it was mostly in order I would just ask lots of questions because to be honest I just wanted to make sure I wasn't my main concern was yeah peaking sort of too too early and not right. you know then not being able to kind of you know claw, claw it back and so I think up to episode you know episodes one to four we're kind of aware that Nate's a bit like you yeah, know what something you know and and you could sense that I could you know even when the those episodes aired people were like nah, what's up with Nate this isn't the Nate we know like, there's something up but it's important that it wasn't more than that and there was no justification for it it just felt different and and um right and everyone's like huh and then i think by episode five which is when he 
takes his his mum and dad to the restaurant. I think it's then that we're starting to see this kind of this heel turn. The spitting in the mirror is quite right. symbol symbolic, and you know, episode seven. Yeah, then and then it kind of tracks quite quite linearly. Actually, um, you know, he's 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 lashing out at increasingly sort of in kind of increasingly bigger ways. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I tra I found difficult was trying to make sure that the kind of comedy moments in Nate, which are kind of a lot more, felt a lot easier in season one because it was easier to do mm -hmm. the kind of awkward comedy thing than it is to be kind of like, you know, a bit of a bully one moment and then be kind of revert back to sort of season one Nate. Because, you know, right. there are certain, when he's with Keely, you know, he's, he's nervous because he, he right. fancies her. Uh, and, you know, even when he's out of his comfort, so, you know, even when he's talking to the waitress trying to get the table and she's like, absolutely not. Um, no, you know, he's kind of, he, he's season one Nate again. And so the, the, there's a bit of, back and forth um so yeah the balance of that was but you know they're they're so great and you know the writers are, and the creators you know a lot of them are always on set and stuff so we kind of you know there's lots of places to ask questions and we're you know we're well supported to so we don't kind of suddenly do something that feels out right. of whack which is what is coming right well what was it like unfolding watching the season unfold from i guess friends and family getting in touch with you your twitter mentions anything as people were kind of like my, my dad watches the show as well. And I've, I've got the screeners, but he's watching week to week. And he's like, yeah. every single episode, man, Nate's really texts me. Nate's really upsetting me. Like, so as the fans <laughs> are kind of seeing that progression you just talked about, what was the reaction like that you heard? Yeah, it's quite, it's quite full on, like increasingly full on, I think is fair to say. Partic I mean, particularly off the back of episode seven, which ends with him throwing the t-shirt at the uh, Will, the kit man. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that en it ends the episode, I think, that moment. Right. So it kind of leaves a nasty taste in the mouth, I think. And um, yeah, particularly then with Keely in episode 11, that, that you know, everyone was like, huh. And you know, I mean, occasionally it got a bit heavy and people were like, oh, this is triggering for me. And, you know, seeing him be become a bully, even though he was a victim before that. And, you know, so I, I you know, I kind of distanced myself a little bit from some of that because you don't want to get too, too, too bogged down into it but um uh yeah you know there is a there is a responsibility to kind of portray this stuff for real and you know we right. wanted to certainly some of the darker stuff and the more kind of raw emotional stuff the scene between Ted and Nate you know it needed to feel real because it felt like we were just building towards that whole whole point and so Definitely. you know I, I get that there's been a bit of a you know a strong reaction to certain things um but I guess that means, you know, the writers have done their job, you know, they've, they've told the story they want to tell because that's how people should be feeling, you know, because they're not, right. you know, we don't want to, no one's condoning Nate's behavior. You know, they should be hating on Nate. So that is correct, really. Um, right. And as weird as that sounds. That's as unhappy as his storyline may make the fans who were rooting for him. It's sort of, that's the brilliance of this show, because I feel like most times your underdog, your season one, Nate, is someone who's just has a good heart, is is wholesome, and then defeats the gets confidence, defeats the bully, and then lives happily ever after. But now you have gained yeah. that confidence. You did defeat the bully, but then the show is subverting it, and it's like, wait a minute, Nate himself is a bully. He's just got the mm. power now. Mm. So what is that? What's this, mm. uh, how does that feel to be able to to just defy so many tropes or or stereotypes? I think it's great. I, you know, I think the the writers were so so bold with that and, and and it's brilliant because you know they they could easily have been oh you know season one did well we can rest on our laurels basically do the same again because everyone likes it but they absolutely didn't they completely tested and manipulated the audience in a brilliant brilliant way this season you know it, it absolutely took a darker turn um you know i think any any criticism of of, of the, uh, like early criticism of, of the show in itself was that oh there's not much conflict and you know it's all kind of positive and you know happy happy and you know you can absolutely not say that about season two of Ted Lasso right. I mean it, deal, it deals with some pretty dark stuff and you know it goes places where season one didn't didn't go and you know they absolutely turn things on on the heads and same with the Roy Keeley storyline as well you know in an ideal world they would live happily ever after and that would be all fine right. and sorted and it's not um and I think there's a real truth to that and I know you know particularly with the Nate storyline I know that Jason has said uh before plenty of times you know hurt people hurt people and you know the you know the the person who who is bullied becoming the bully isn't isn't you know not saying that that is correct or that that's always the case but there's certainly there is a truth to that sometimes you know yeah. that that actually these bullies it just comes from a deep place of insecurity to a time when they were 
bullied or not made to feel they have any worth and so that's 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 the story that, that you know we're telling with Nate and yeah there is a there is a truth to that sadly right well I want to go back one thing when I was speaking with Hannah last summer she really we, we I asked her about the significance of starting with her in episode one ending with her to close the final season she yeah. made that seem very significant and so when season two started and it starts with you. I'm like, okay, yeah. that's who we're ending with. This is this yeah. is the same thing. But you have almost an anti-Rebecca arc instead of the, yeah. the redemptive arc. You're going down the the dark path this season. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, what was the significance of you know this being Nate's season? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's like like what I was saying before. Really, what I, I just really like that they have you know, what they've done with these characters. You know, it feels like we know who these characters are off season one, but then we're just sort of taking them in slightly new directions or kind of unpicking, you know, their characters and giving them more layers. And so, yeah, I mean, I remember either Brett or Jason telling me that, you know, they wanted to, you know, their plan is to kind of open and close on Nate's eyes. And, but at the end of the season, they're kind of, and it's scripted, it says the light, the light in his eyes has gone out. I don't know if that kind of reads on, on telly, but that, you know, sort of, you know, sort of motivation way in terms of the sort of the look to camera that was what that you know was meant to show and yeah I mean it's kind of it's kind of crazy I remember when they first told me that that was their plan for Nate and um you know it's going to be quite a front and center arc for this season you know a, a I was incredibly flattered and excited by it but um but right. yeah also it just told me that they're you know they're not they're going to really challenge the viewers they're going to be really bold in their writing and uh you know and as much as it felt like a good thing to follow Hannah's arc um, in season one and it was a, a redemptive one which feels so good and similar to Nate. Nate's was a really positive arc. This is a really negative kind of spiral right. but you know really fun and interesting for that as well. Right well let's take a look at where everything stands right now. Where does season two leave us? We've got Nate at West Ham with Rupert. The, the it, Like you said Empire Strikes Back. We've got Vader and the Empire teaming up over there and then Richmond gets promoted, so seemingly there's going to be a collision course there. Season three is still in the works, being written. No production has started yet. Do you have any hopes for your character? Do you want him to embrace the bad? Do you want him to, to redeem himself? If you had your pick. Uh, I mean, if I had my pick, because I'm quite romantic, I'd obviously <laughs> redeem him. <laughs> like, obviously, it would be great if it was a redemptive. I, I genuinely don't know. As, as you say, they're writing it in the moment. Um, you, 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 like you say, you absolutely, you can, you can predict there'll be some kind of clash between West Ham and, and uh, Richmond. But, um, you know, when that happens, whether that opens the season, ends it, is in the middle of it, I don't know. Whether Nate has done too much to really redeem himself. I mean, you know, I, I, I wouldn't put it past the writers to, you know, to have one character that they'd never redeem. Because, you know, everyone that's what you would predict. You would predict that, that he comes it. back around, yeah. Exactly. But it's not the case. Exactly. So, you know, I, I genuinely don't know. I roughly have been given a few little broad things, but I obviously can't give those away. But yeah, who, who right. knows? The devil will be in the detail. And uh, yeah, I think we start filming early next year. So yeah, but they're writing it now. Well, I'm excited to see it. I'm thrilled that we got to have you back on the show, Nick. Thank you so much for Thanks, joining Seth. us. It was a blast. Thanks so much for having me. Take care. <laughs>